Hello, Friar family. My name is Jenny Patricic, class of 2001. I am the owner and founder of Simple Graces Art and Wellness, and I wanted to share with all of my extended Friar family a short yoga practice that you can do with your little ones or perhaps they're a little bit older and are able to do some of these poses by themselves. But I thought what would be a lot of fun for our virtual homecoming is to give all of you the gift of yoga for your young ones. Yoga is a practice that many of us are familiar with as adults, and there is a growing trend for young children, parent and me classes on the rise, but yoga is a, a gift that you can give your children and your family starting right from when they're babies, where you can practice along with them, and then as they get into their toddler and preschool years, this is something that you can use as a tool when they're having a hard time regulating their emotions or having temper tantrums or perhaps if they're too wound up at the end of the day, you can use yoga as a way to help them learn how to calm their bodies and connect with what they may be feeling physically with what they're feeling emotionally. And then as your little yogis get to grade school years and they're at desks all day, yoga is often introduced into classrooms to help our young yogis concentrate on their lessons, maybe have a bit of a movement break in between projects. And then when we get up into our preteen years and our teen years, yoga starts to take the form of what we would normally use as adults. It's a meditative practice. It's actually stretching and learning about proper form and function and what yoga can do for your body physically and emotionally. And then as we get to be an older teen, our kids are older teens, they can start taking yoga classes with you at a yoga studio or a gym or however else you access yoga programs. So my gift to you and the Friar family on this virtual homecoming in this unprecedented time is to just have a short 20, 30 minute yoga class for your littles. You can adapt what I'm doing to fit the age group of your child. But this practice today, I would say is probably a practice that you'd want to use for your young ones all the way up to maybe seven, eight-ish because I'm going to use some imaginative role playing with the poses themselves. And maybe once you're kind of in that, your child might be in that eight to nine year old age bracket, they may find some of this stuff to be a little bit babyish for them, but that's okay. That's when they can start to learn some of the proper form. So with all my young yogi classes, we always start in a circle around a room and we just welcome each other by waving, saying hello, saying our name. And since I can't be with you in person to teach this class, I'm just gonna give everyone out there watching a big wave and a big welcome and a little bit of a go Friars to start our lesson today. So we always come seated at our mat and it's important that even if you have a child that is you know, maybe three, four-ish age and up, that they have their own mat. And our mat is our safe place. And that's something that you can weave into your uh, practice with your child is to allow them to have their own mat. That's their own calm, safe space. So when we come to our yoga mat, this is where we can quietly reflect. This is where we can learn how to calm our bodies and calm our minds. So we're gonna start our practice today. We did our wave, we did our hello, and now we're gonna do some, we are gonna do some centering breath work to get us really rooted and grounded into the present moment. So you wanna sit crisscross applesauce as the little ones like to here at school and at preschool. In grown-up world, we are in happy, easy Sukhasana pose. We have our legs crisscrossed, we kind of move our sit bones down and we firmly plant into our safe space our mat or as the young kids like to call this this is their magic carpet which can transform them into another place another time but it will always be a place that they can come back to so we're going to sit in our crisscross applesauce 
happy, easy pose. Grown-ups, you can kind of rub your knees. If you have a really, really little one, like a little baby that isn't quite walking or maybe an 18-month-old that wants to run away, you can place them right on your lap. You can hug them in close. The whole point of parent and me or little ones yoga is that you want to feel those connections. We're all craving the human connection right now. So you want to have your little one hugged right in close on your lap, or they can be seated next to you, or if they're a little bit older, their own mat. So we're going to start by taking some deep breaths in, equal part in, equal part out. And this kind of breathing is going to help to start to calm your parasympathetic system, which is all that, that scary big emotion system. So we want to go into the count of four, you can do that in your head, and then out to the count of four. If you feel comfortable, you can close your eyes, you can look a little bit ahead of your nose, a little point further in your room, but we're just going to breathe in and out. We're going to do this maybe five or six rounds. I'll keep count in my head and then gently draw you back to the present moment. And after you've completed maybe four or five rounds of that equal part breath in and out, I want you to think about how your body feels right now. Whether you're the grown up watching this or one of my little yogis, think about how your body feels when you take several deep breaths in and then you blow it all out. You might notice some warmth that travels all the way up, all the way to the tip of your nose. And then that warm air pushes all the way back down, all the way into your belly and right where you're sitting on your mat. This is so important. That breath is actually cleaning your whole body from the inside out. So when you're breathing in all that really, really good oxygen, it's cleaning all of your organs. And then you're breathing it out and it's cleaning everything again. It's getting rid of all the bad energy right out of your body. So it's important throughout the day to think about that. When you're having really, really big emotions, when anyone says to you, just take a breath, just breathe, it really does work. You can stop, take a deep breath in, take a deep breath out. And it's really hard for our young yogis to remember to do that. And that's why mom and dad, it's so important. And grandma and grandpa or whatever friend is watching this video today with your little yoga, yogi, is to remember to just breathe. It's so, 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 so important to get that clean air in and get all the bad germy air out and just to clean and warm up our body. Now, I brought a friend with me today. This is Maddie Teddy. And she's gonna sit over there on her own mat and she's got this really cool little tool so that if we were in person, I might do this if I had to wake you up from a pose or if we had to transition to another pose. So I'm gonna ding my little bell and we're gonna transition to the next part of our class. So when I do yoga classes in person for my little ones, oftentimes we get to play games and we get to run around and we get to kind of maybe do like Yogi Says, like Simon Says. So those are all games that you can do at home with your little ones. You can just pick a yoga pose out of a book or the internet, whatever it might be, and you can model the pose and then have your little one do it and then you can throw it into a game where you do Yogi Says. So since we're not gonna get to play a game today, I thought we could start with taking that breath that we just did and taking it one step further. Now I have this deck of cards, it's called Little Renegades. It's fabulous. It is full of lots of little tips and tricks and little games that you can play with your young ones at home. So I pulled this card and it says Giving Tree. So on this Giving Tree card, 
This time when we take a breath in, we're going to think about a gift that maybe we receive from someone special and how that gift made us feel. If it made us happy, excited, whatever it might be, think about that when you take your breath in. And then when you take your breath out and you push that air out in your head, think about giving that gift to someone else and notice if your body feels a little different. So we're going to take that breath in nice and deep. One more time. You can put your hands right on your knees or if you have your little one, hug them in tight. And we're going to think about a time where we've received a gift from someone else. And then when we breathe out, we're going to think about giving that gift to someone else that we love, or maybe giving that gift to someone who might need that gift. Maybe someone that made us angry or made us sad, but maybe they'd feel a little better if they got our gift. So we're going to take a deep breath in. Now give that gift. Now you notice when I took that deep breath in, my shoulders kind of came up near my ears. And then when I took a deep breath out, I pushed it all out and I gave that gift back out into the world. So that's another way that you can use a breath work to help you think about something that made you feel really good and then give that breath back out to the world and think about giving your gifts to other people. So now I'm going to take you into a couple really fun poses that I picked today and I'm going to try to stay low to my mat just so that everyone can see me. So we've already done our crisscross applesauce, happy easy pose right here and next we are going to come into a fun pose called cat cow. Now how many people watching have ever done cat cow? Maybe it's Halloween time. You can see I've got some spooky stuff in the background at my house, angry cats. We're just going to pretend that we're just like an excited cat because we don't want to be too angry. So we're going to meet in tabletop pose, which is this pose. And you can see I have my hands and my elbows and my shoulders lined up in a line. I've got my knee in line with my hip. Okay. And I'm going to plant my hands down. Now I'm planting my hands down in starfish. So that means I'm spreading my fingers out so I can really make sure that I am stuck to my magic carpet. So here we are, we are in our neutral table. Now moms and dads, grandmas, grandpas, and friends, if you've got a little one that likes to climb on your back, it happens and that's okay. Some little ones like to crawl right underneath. Sometimes our fur animals like to do it, like our cats and our dogs, they love to get underneath you when you're in tabletop pose, but that's okay. We just go with the flow, that's what yoga is all about. So we're going to take that deep breath in. We're going to go up like a cow. We're going to reach our necks up, maybe look up at the ceiling. You want your throat nice and open. And then we're going to breathe it all out by arching our back like that excited kitty cat that we saw on Halloween day. And you're going to push it all out and arch your back like this. Now we're going to take this three or four times at your own pace. Remember to be breathing in and out. We got our kitty cats. We're gonna go to cow. Back to that cat. And then up to our cow. And then after you've done this maybe three, four, five times, whatever you like, we're gonna meet back at our tabletop. Now why do they call this tabletop? What could go on my back right now? Maybe a little one, maybe a cat might come along and jump on my back, but it's kind of flat, like I'm at a table. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take one of our hands, it doesn't matter which one, whichever one you wanna start with, we're gonna raise it way up at the sky, we're gonna give a little wave to the sun and the clouds, and then we're gonna scoop our hand like we're taking a scoop of ice cream, and we're gonna go all the way through and lay down and rest our side of our head. We're just gonna stay here for a breath and then we're gonna repeat it on the other side. So whichever side you started with, switch. So we're gonna come back up. 
We're gonna take that arm way up and scoop it like an ice cream scoop and we're gonna scoop it all the way through. And if you want, you can put your other arm way out. You can keep it in. And then you're gonna rise back up and now we're in that tabletop. So from here, we just worked a little bit of our shoulders. We stretched out our backs. We opened up our chest and our throat area. So now we need to take a little rest. Little kids love taking rest. So we're gonna go back into our child's pose. Maybe you need to put your legs wide. You can reach your arms out. And then you wanna kiss your forehead right to your magic carpet, okay? So you're just gonna do this. And then after four or five breaths, you can push yourselves up. And we're gonna sit back on our heels, okay? So child's pose is a nice rest pose that if you're really tired and cranky at the end of a day, you can go into child's pose. Why do you think it's called child's pose? Because many of our young yogis naturally get into that position because it helps calm their bellies. If they have belly aches or if they're a little uh, you know, nervous or anxious, that pose helps kind of give that nice massage to their tummies. What's also nice as a parent or a caregiver, if your child is in child's pose, you can place your hand right in between their back shoulder blades. You can place the other palm of your hand at their lower back and just give them a gentle little massage and that can help stimulate their, their blood flow a little bit so that they're feeling loved and comfortable. So it's another lovely pose to do at the end of the day or if they're having some big emotions. So you can see I'm sitting on the backs of my heels right now. I'm gonna go sideways so you see this. So this pose, my legs are straight, planted on my magic carpet, my piggy toes are down into the mat. This is called hero pose. So for hero pose, you wanna kind of sit up, nice straight back, you don't wanna be slumped forward, you want your shoulders up and back into our hero pose, okay? So we're just gonna sit here for another minute and breathe in and out, remember those equal parts, in and out. So this is also another rest pose, but it's an active rest pose. So this is also another great one. If kids are watching some TV or they're in the listening to a story that you're reading to them, it's another alternative to them just laying on the ground or sitting in crisscross applesauce. This is another way that keeps everything in line so that their knees aren't splayed out to the side, which could put a lot of pressure on their little kneecaps for uh, development. You want to stay nice and strong in your hero pose. So how many of my little yogis that are watching love rainbows? My little girls love rainbows. My son loves them too, although he wouldn't admit that. But rainbows are a big, big thing in our house. So for rainbow pose, it's also known as wide-legged pose. So you want to sit in a comfortable V position, and you want to make sure that you're bottom parts of your legs are kissing your mat. You want to make sure you're all straight all the way through your thighs and your hip bones. You don't want to have that C curve to your back. You want to be sitting up nice and strong. So for rainbow, if we were in class, I'd say, what color do you want me to start with? And since no one can answer me back, I'm going to pick one. So I'm going to start my rainbow with aqua. So I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to dip it in my can of aqua paint and I'm gonna start over on one side. I'm gonna take a deep breath and I'm gonna paint the rainbow to my other foot. Now you can use the same hand and I'm gonna say, hmm, I think, I think after aqua, I really like yellow. So I'm gonna dip it into the yellow paint and I'm gonna go over to my other foot. Now I'm gonna switch arms, I'm gonna mix it up. I'm gonna dip that paintbrush in and I'm gonna think I'm gonna pick orange because Halloween's coming up and I love orange. So I'm gonna cross over and I'm gonna paint my foot with some orange and I'm gonna 
breathe over and I'm gonna get to the other foot. And of course, if I'm gonna do orange for Halloween, I need to do black. And yes, black is in the rainbow. So we're gonna take that black paint and crisscross over to the other side. And what this position is doing for your little ones is called crossing the midline. This is so important for us to build our core strength, even when we're little yogis. That core strength is gonna keep your little ones, legs and knees from having all sorts of troubles when they get older and they're playing sports. So you can go through painting the rainbow back and forth as a way to get them to cross the midline. You can use the same arm. I'm gonna crisscross my arms and it helps to breathe it out it's also wonderful for color recognition and to get our little yogis thinking about art, which most little yogis love to get creative. So I'm gonna come back to my mat here and I'm gonna settle into my nice straight staff pose and I'm gonna take a deep breath up and I'm gonna blow it out and I'm gonna land wherever I land, whether I have tight hamstrings, super flexible hamstrings. I'm gonna keep my toes pointed up at the ceiling and I'm gonna let a di be big deep breath out. Now we'll go in and then out. So now I'm gonna come down and lay on the mat and then I am gonna walk you through two more little poses and then we're gonna do a little meditation together and then we'll say goodbye. So when you're laying down on your mat, your magic carpet, okay, you can go long and strong. And if you have a little one that needs to lay on top of you, this is a perfect time to get those cuddles in. Okay, so you're gonna lay down on your mat. Okay, and you're gonna settle in and get those wiggles out. And then we're gonna plant our feet under our knees and wiggle in. We're gonna take our hands and plant them into the mat. And on our breath in, we're gonna raise our hips into bridge pose. So we're gonna breathe in and then push it out to bridge pose. So a lot of the little yogis love to do bridge variation. They may not be able to hold a bridge very long, but that's okay. They can't do it yet. So they can kick a leg up and you can do it fast, right? They can pretend they're a bug. They can pretend they're any animal. You can have them kick their legs. So we'll get a couple kicks in and keep that bridge up. And when you're ready, you roll that bridge down. And then we are going to hug those knees in and we're gonna rock back and forth, back and forth. And this helps give that nice little massage to your lower back. And then the last pose I'm gonna show you, and I think any parent knows that babies do this, which is why this is called Happy Baby. You can grab your toes and get a little stretch and you can do that same motion, rocking back and forth. And my little bit older yogis like to call this dead bug. That's what my son likes to call this, the dead bug pose. And you can kick it out, you can get silly, get all those wiggles out and then when you're ready, I'm gonna have you lie back because we always end practice with rest pose. I'm gonna sit up on the camera, but you can lay down. You wanna have your palms facing up. If you wanna still receive more energy for the day, but if it's the end of the day, you can put your hands down. You can place your hands on your belly. If you've got a little one on you, you can place your hands right across your little one's back for a nice hug. And in grown-up world, we call this Shavasana. In our little yogi world, this is our magic carpet ride. So I'm gonna sit up, but I want you to stay laying down and just listen to my voice. And I want you to imagine that you are on a magic carpet. You're comfortable, it's your favorite color. 
Maybe the sun is shining, the clouds are drifting by, and your magic carpet starts to lift up from the ground. It's not gonna drop you. You're in a safe place. And as your magic carpet goes up, up, up into the sky, you start to listen to maybe birds flying by, chirping. You can hear the wind of the trees. Maybe it's that giving tree, breathing out all of your gifts into the world. The sun is warm on your skin, so you can feel the sun. You can think about what it looks like to be way up in the sky on your magic carpet. Maybe if you peered over the edge of your magic carpet, you'd see a forest, maybe with a clearing with animals, deer, fox, maybe some different types of birds in the forest. Maybe you see a unicorn with a very bright sparkly horn or a fairy. There could be a fairy in your forest. Whatever your imagination wants to think about as you're on your magic carpet going over this magical forest. And as we go past the forest, maybe we get to a lake or a pond. What might you see in a pond? Think about that inside your head with your imagination. And then we're gonna go past this pond or lake. Maybe we go back to a nice meadow where there are butterflies and flowers and our magic carpet settles back down. And we just lay there in the warmth of the sun with the birds chirping and the butterflies flapping. Maybe you hear a bee buzzing. And just take notice of how your body feels to be on your magic carpet, your safe space, And when you're ready, you can start to wiggle your toes and your hands and bring those movements back into your body. If your little one is laying on top of you, you can start to rock back and forth a little bit. Feel the warmth of their skin and their heartbeat beating against yours. And then you can roll over to your right side and push yourself back up into our happy, easy pose. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes and return to this present moment, still sitting on your magic carpet. And we always close our yogic practice with gratitude and thanks. Gratitude for everyone that decided to click on the link and join us for this virtual little class. Thank you to the family members who joined our little yogis in on this journey. And just a thank you for everyone that is a part of our Friar family. So we always seal our practice with Namaste. We put our hands in prayer pose. We put them at our hearts. And when we say Namaste, it's a magical word that really means that I see and I honor the light in you. And it's a way of giving your love and your gratitude to somebody else. Just like when we did our breath work at the beginning of class, when we took a deep breath in and thought about a gift that meant so much to us, and then we took that breath out and we gave that gift to someone else. So we're gonna seal our practice with that thought of gratitude. Take one more big deep breath in. Take that deep breath out and we bow to everyone and say namaste. Thank you so much everyone for joining me today. Again, happy homecoming weekend and hopefully really, really soon I'll be able to see all you little yogis in person on campus. Take care, go Friars.